Welcome. Hi, Benedict, Christine. I don't know who DTL is. Heather. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jim. Hi, Natalka. Hi, Pam. Hi, other Pam. Hi, Yuri. Hi, everybody. All right. It's always my uh, my ride or die crew here. How do I get this thing out of my way? <clears throat> so today we're looking at William Turner. Um, let me just share my. Okay. Should good. we pull out our oil pastels, Katie? Yes. Thank you. Um, sorry, I realized that I didn't, like, you can use any medium. I don't know what I said on the email. I'm, everything is becoming extra difficult and I don't know why anything, nothing is working. Literally nothing works. So I'm just doing the best I can. And if it doesn't work, just don't do the class. Like, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I can't fix it for you. So I did what I could do. Here's the websites. I'll show you all of them. I don't understand something. <clears throat> for some reason, my screen changed as the host and I just can't find my buttons anymore. I don't, I'm not really sure. Uh, okay, art appreciation. I know you've seen this before. Um, the lessons, you can, you click the arrow and then they drop down. You can see all the lessons. This week will be Edward Hopper and Adrian Guinea. You will click on that lesson or I will just send you the link straight to that lesson. And then in order to watch the video, it's all the way down at the bottom. So whenever I put a video, I put it into the lesson like this. So people keep saying, I can't find your video. Well, it's at the bottom of every page right here. And then you just have to click play and it will play. Um, so that's for that class. And then we also have, so this is landscape painting class. And today we're on lesson three. Let me get this screen out of my way. There we go. Lesson three. So you click this little arrow or you click the link I gave you and you get lesson three. Then you see William Turner, the slave ship, the size, there's a video to watch. Um, let me make sure I'm, sh yeah. There's a video to watch. You can click on this to read his bio. So all of these squares, they all link to something. So if you click on it, it'll show you something new. Um, it'll take you to a video. So first we're gonna watch this video. Maybe. Oh, come on. We're standing in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, in front of what we know as Turner's Slave Ship. But the full title of this work is Slave Ship, Slavers Throwing Overboard, The Dead and Dying, Typhoon Coming On. You know, when we first come across this painting, it looks really beautiful. It's got oranges and reds, and we see that typical Turner sunset. We're lost in the thick sensuality of the paint. But then... My eye goes to the bottom right-hand corner, and in a moment of horror, I see a foot and a leg and a shackle in chains, and all of a sudden, it's not a seascape, and it's not about a sunset, and it's not about light on the water, or not only about those things anymore. There's real carnage right in front of us, in fact, in the closest part of the painting towards us. So we're looking at an image of a slave ship that we can see in the distance. This is a ship carrying slaves, and a typhoon has come on. This is based on a poem, but we know that this is something that happened in reality, and not just once, but many times. With the storm coming, the captain of the ship decided to throw the slaves overboard. Apparently, that was the only way you could collect the 
insurance. If the slaves died of illness or other things while on board, the captain of the ship couldn't claim insurance. So what he's done is he's thrown the slaves overboard, and that's what we see happening. It is really horrifying. We only see parts of their bodies, and there's a swirl of waves and colors. And again, there's this mixture of the beauty of nature, the power of nature, and this horrific human act that is within the context of a much wider horrific human act of slavery. We do have this sense of divine retribution, the storm coming for that slave ship that's been dealing in human lives, and the punishment wreaked by nature is justified on that ship. But there's also a sense of the total indifference of nature, because the same storm that's going to overcome that slave ship is also going to drown the slaves themselves. Nature is completely indifferent to the human endeavors, whether they are good, evil, otherwise, whatever. So the first owner of this painting was the great Victorian art critic John Ruskin. Then the painting made its way to Boston to an abolitionist, to someone who believed in and struggled for the ending of slavery. Now, the British had outlawed slavery in 1833 in the colonies. The French do it in their colonies 15 years later. But of course, in America, slavery isn't outlawed until the Civil War. So slavery, we have to remember, is still a really active political cause at this moment. This idea that human beings could do this to each other, not just in the form of actual slavery, of buying and selling human beings, but also in terms of taking advantage of one another just for the sake of money. And of course, that's the kernel of this hideous act that the captain engages in here. When we look into the left quarter of the painting, we see some really different colors than what we see in the rest of the painting. Whites and blues and purples and grays. Ruskin wrote, purple and blue, the lurid shadows of the hollow breakers are cast upon the mist of night, which gathers cold and low, advancing like the shallow of death upon the guilty ship as it labors amidst the lightning of the sea, its thin masts written upon the sky in lines of blood. All right. So that is a very intense and beautiful painting that we're going to be painting today. And boy, do I love getting into this emotion of these paintings. But let's watch one more quick video just about, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Here it is. Um, about Turner, quickly. Two minutes. We'll get started. Robert Turner is such a wonderful artist because he's so difficult to define. He was a landscape painter. He was a history painter. He was a, a narrative painter. I think for many people, Turner is the greatest British painter, certainly the greatest historical British painter. So he was an artist who was always reinventing himself, always moving forward. Well, I'm standing beside Turner's self-portrait that he probably painted around 1799, and it's the work that is going to be reproduced in a kind of engraved form on the new 20-pound banknote. I think Turner would be thrilled. He loved money. And more than anything else, he loved his own money and lots of it. And, uh, but he never actually seems to have had a bank account. So I think he'd have been mildly amused that he actually appeared on a bank note. There will be uh, a quotation alongside it, which refers to Turner's interest in light and color when he said in one of his lectures uh, to students at the Royal Academy in London, he said, light is therefore color. He's going to join Winston Churchill and Jane Austen it's wonderful that we have an artist as one of those major British historical figures featured on the British bank note. All right. So just a little interesting bits to learn about the artwork and about the artists that we're learning from. If you want to learn more, then go to the lesson here that I've made for you. This is the video which we just watched, the earlier one. Then this is a great, I love 
uh, the art story. They do it for tons of artists. And what you can see is you'll see like a timeline of when they were born and when they worked, when they died, and then a really good long history of the artist's um, life. And it's uh, the art story doesn't do it for every artist, but when they have them available for the artists that I teach, I definitely try to post these up so that you can take the time and really dive into these artists if you really like them. So that is called the art story. Um, one thing to do, so for example, the landscape painting website, if you like it and you wanna, well, you should just save it. And the way you can save it is you click on bookmarks and then you go to bookmark this tab. I already have it bookmarked, but um, then it'll ask you what you wanna name it, landscape painting, lesson three, and then you click done. I'm not gonna do that because I already have it bookmarked. Or, you know, if I was at the home page, it would save the home page. But then you can always just go to your bookmarks and then it's in a drop down. So mine is right here. And then I can click on that. And I don't ever have to remember the name of the website. Um, I know that, well, you can't, the names are like weird long link names because if I buy a, if I buy a page for like $10 a year, then I'm responsible for paying for that $10 to have www.whatever times four classes, times three other websites I have. So that's like, you know, a lot of money to put in for a website. So I don't do that. It's just a Google site, but you have it available to you all the time. Um, and, and, you know, use these tools. So it, for example, yesterday, a lot of people are confused about yesterday's class. It's right here. If you go to your landscape or li life drawing class, they look the same on the front. They both have this video that tells you how to join. They all have the link right here. Um, and I don't know why the links changed. Don't ask me what the heck is going on with Zoom. I'm just trying to make it through the day with this stuff. So uh, then in here we have all the, I've done different things. So under structure is where we've been working under structure. And then last week we did the structure. This is the Proco video. I haven't uploaded my video it wouldn't upload last week but then this week's video is right here so if you'll notice people think this is the proco video this is my video see how it's got my katie reese right here this is my video it looks like it's a proco video but when you click it it goes to my lesson right here so you can see that it's me uh, i've gotten a lot of emails about that this is the right video it's right here here's the image um, and then the following weeks will be down here. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's get to drawing. So go to this one. What? 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 Sorry, I don't I don't know. Share. Hmm. Okay, so Out of this okay so now this is what you should be able to see I think everyone can see my uh, printout of the William Turner piece and then I've got a blank sheet of paper here now you can use any medium you want I just because this is an oil painting and because it has a lot of like emotion kind of marks in it I really wanted to use those use oil pastel today but use whatever you want you could use colored pencil, paint, anything. Okay, so when we look at this, I see in general like a, what do you think? A little, it's not, this would be halfway, I'd say. So it's a little less than, excuse me, halfway. And let me just get a sip of water. Okay. All right, so we have a horizon line. That's really all we need to notice. We need to notice that there's, uh, it's not quite in the middle. The only whites on the page are right here and right here. So everything is gonna be darker than white. All of this is not white. 
Um, all these details, we're going to keep them really soft. You can put more details in if you want to. This isn't the highest quality image, and I don't know what the highest quality image you have is, so you may not even be able to see all those details, but we can put some little fishes or whatever, and then we have the boat here. So we have sea, wave, sky, um, and boat. I'm not even going to draw it out first. I'm going to start with a nice light, uh, I'll do light orange so you can see, I can, hopefully you can see your image printed out because I can't put both of them up over here. Okay, oops. So the first thing I see, I'm going to do my little horizon line, I'm just going to do a nice light line, a little bit lower than halfway. And I want to make sure that I leave that white space. So I'm just going to take my yellow and leave a circle there where I want to make sure I leave that yellow. Same with over here. I'm just going to leave a, a triangle sort of area so that I can make sure I leave that really white. Um, <clears throat> then, and you know, if you want to start with a lighter color like yellow, I think that's a good idea. I'm just using orange so that you can see it. Okay, so then I see, I'm gonna try to, basically there's a division between the light source coming down and then there's, let's break up this bottom right section now into this shape here. So just trying to see the larger shape. So I'm gonna do this like that. And I'm gonna do this like that. This is actually quite an easy composition. Um, it's really about placing the colors where you want to place them and then it's about using your marks, your textural marks. So really paying attention to which way are those lines scribbling um, and you know the brush work is what makes it his work so beautiful. Well and like he said in the video it's all about the light right so um, I'm going to go with my yellow first because you want to work light to dark and I'm going to put in some of my yellows around that brightest white spot and I'm trying to follow the, the curves that I see with the the brushwork that he's doing you know there's sort of like light flying around and moving up this way really this is a great um, a great piece to work on to get out some of those emotions and just kind of go crazy with it and feel really loose and free today. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of scribbling yellow all over where I see those yellow, yellow bits. And even over here where it gets white and blue, I'm going to put white over that. Um, get some, there's a lot of yellow in this. And you know, the yellow is going to peek out from behind, so it's good, but I don't want to get it over here where I have these blues coming in. Try to leave that part alone. But there's a good amount of yellow. Looks like a big scribble at the moment. So let's go for our, our next color. You need sort of like a sienna, or I'm sorry, let's do orange because I will go back to the orange now. So now I, the where, where I see the most orange is above the ship and it's over here. My oil pastels are super slippery and slick. So I have to be careful uh, not to put too much. But you know, I think the layering is sort of what will build this up and make it look like beautiful oil paint. I was so impressed by the Van Gogh pieces, how much that oil pastel, wow, they were so vibrant and beautiful, you guys. And I, um, I should show you that on the, while you're coloring your orange, or, well, I won't show you it, but I've shown you it many times, and many of you have found the comment section, but of course in the email I sent out yesterday, the link didn't work for the comment page because nothing in the computer realm is my friend right now. But we're just doing it. Okay, so over here on the left, it's going to get like purples and reds and blues mixed in, so I don't want to put too much oranges up there. So part of what I'm doing right now is having knowledge of, of what colors layer well and what... Um, 
process to work from light to dark and also using colors that work well next to each other on the color wheel at the moment. Orange and yellow live next to each other, so they're obviously good neighbors. Their orange is made from yellow and red, so it would make sense that they look good together. Tell me if I'm going too fast. This is one of those where it's kind of just like scribble, 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 and so you can get a little messy with it, but if I'm going too fast, just let me know. Okay, so I have this, um, it's like a, oh, it says it's rust color. It's a good name. Terracotta, raw sienna, something like that. Um, I'm going to pull off some of that skin. Now I'm going to look at this uh, right corner over here, and I'm going to start making some of my marks really, like, more like the brush strokes that I see. I'm really trying to honor the brushwork and the same way that we followed Van Gogh's brushwork, we're gonna do the same for Turner. Try to get the movement that he was thinking about, the motion of the ocean, literally. That ship looks like a tiny little rag doll amongst all that wind and water blowing. It's so funny, I keep picking these pieces and then I learn about them and I'm like, gosh, Katie. <laughs> You couldn't have picked a more uplifting painting, <laughs> but you know, I picked them based on the composition and, um, and the mood because today I thought, well, texture would be really fun. Just try doing different marks. You should be able to hear your pencil or your whatever is in your hand tapping the paper like this. Try to get some loud, thick marks. You can tell what kind of marks you're making by the sound that your pencil is making or your pastel. Look at those waves on the left hand side. They've got a bit of curve to them, especially going up towards the center here. So get some curve in there. And then when we get over here, we want to leave room for that to get really blue. So I don't want to put too much brown on top of it. So we're going to leave that alone. Kind of just ch -ch -ch back and forth like this. Let those marks be wild. Get your emotions out. Take a big deep breath while you do this. It feels great. Anyone who says art isn't therapy is totally wrong. This is like the best medicine. Let's scribble this stuff out. Hope everyone's doing okay. Feel free to type in. Let me know. Um, have you done any other transcriptions this week? Have you found any other artwork to look at? Any other artists that you're excited about? Let's hear it. Type it into the chat box, or I think you could also hold down your space bar on your computer, and that will uh, unmute you while you talk. So if you feel like saying anything now. Anybody cook any good recipes? I made homemade tortillas. I'm probably going to make tamales. I was thinking I would make like lavender, cacao, pineapple, sweet tamales. Sounds pretty good, right? Okay, now let's go for some light blue first and then we'll go with the dark blue. So if you take a look at your painting, I see light blue up in this corner. I see light blue over here. And there's some in the bottom, bottom parts there. This is ocean, so we can get a little bit in here, but mostly over here and just a bit in the top corner. Oh, that's a good idea. Painting veggies before cooking them. Yeah, I mean, the truth is anything is, uh, if you saw the Don Clements video last week um, for art appreciation, she was living in a little tiny New York City apartment and she couldn't make her work, you know, super large. So she started folding up a large piece of paper and then unfolding it to different parts while she was drawing, literally sitting in her bed and painting um, the movies that she was watching and her kitchen. And she would actually just pause movie stills of other people's kitchens and 
their living rooms from movie scenes and paint that stuff. Um, so still keep your marks nice and strong. You'll notice when you get to the blue on top of the brown over here, it's gonna darken up and that's great. We want that to happen. You can see it's dark in the top left-hand corner. But back what I was saying to about um, Don Clements, who passed away, by the way, recently, um, or maybe about a year ago. She was a teacher of mine. I really liked her. Um, so she, uh, she lived in a tiny apartment. She was watching these movies. She would pause them, fold up a big piece of paper, and then, um, you know, do one part at a time, kind of like creating a grid, but when you can only see one square at a time. So I'm still honoring my, trying to really look at the marks, the direction the marks are going and honor the way that those waves are moving. So I'm getting some large curves coming in down here. Remembering I'm probably not, not gonna get those whites ever that bright again, so I need to leave them a little bit bright. You'll notice when you put this light blue over some sort of darkish brown terracotta color, you get a kind of a nice purpley brown. Your colors are gonna make different colors than mine. You can make yours brighter than mine or different. However, I'm sure it'll come out slightly different no matter what we do. Um, Moving over to the right side now, just kidding, there's a few little bits of blue, not too much, but there's a few little bits of blue down here. And there's a whole lot of fishes, um, and they're like attacking that leg, which is pretty gnarly. Gnarly stuff. It's a nice day. I'm gonna go for a walk. Learned a lot about my neighborhood this couple, <laughs> this month. Okay, so let's take a look at, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. Hmm, I think I'm gonna take a moment to, and you, if your white is looking like this, you might need to get a paper towel and wipe it off. Or if you don't care, that's fine. But sometimes you might need your oil pastel really, if it's white, you often have to clean that thing off and you can just wipe it on a paper towel or another, another paper. Um, I, didn't I not add it in the email? Did I not attach the image to the email? Can someone tell me if I attach the image to the email? It's also on the website that I just... I didn't. Jesus. So you're all working without looking at the image? Some of us didn't get any email, but we found it on uh, our lessons website. Well, Natalka, I got your email yesterday or whenever, and I made sure that your name was correct, and I forward you, forwarded you like four emails yesterday, so... I'm gonna have a heart attack. Um, don't worry, we know where to find our lessons, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to mail anything. I just wish I could do one class without a mistake. <sighs> so the image is right here in the lesson. So I told you guys all about this lesson link. I'll send it to you for like the millionth time, but I just, it's right here in the landscape page that I showed you in the beginning of class. Taria, I also fixed your email. Oh shoot, that's not it. I don't know what the heck. 
is going on right now? Okay, well, just Google it. It's called The Slave Ship. Google it. The Slave Ship, 1839. Or go to the landscape page that I sent you in the email, and then scroll down to the bottom, and it's right there. I'm going to keep going. Okay, so then we have... Move all of these things out of my way. There's so many things on my screen, I can't even see what I'm trying to do. Okay, so yeah, I did send you all the link to the lesson. So it's in the bottom of the lesson. So I did send you the image. Um, all right, so back to the white. So I have, this white feels pretty hard. Some of them are hard, some of them are soft. You'll notice when you start scrubbing it into the middle of the page, uh, you can layer white yellows on top of whites or you can layer whites on top of yellows like that. So I'm going to use this white sort of like a blending tool. Now you might have a, a cup. I hope you have a couple whites. This one seems to be really good for blending and moving the colors around. And I might have another white that's a bit softer that I can use to kind of just lay right on top of all of it. So um, right now I'm just moving through the top part of the page blending out all those marks I made before. So one thing about oil pastel that I see is people, they'll leave it around this area with all these like white bubbles showing through. And that doesn't look good. You need to take a white pastel and scribble it around like this and really get those colors mixed up. And if you can't, um, you can do it. Uh, I, I always have to tell people the first time they use oil pastel, okay, go, go back and put 30 more layers now. You know, it's not, um, it's not a one layer game, that's for sure. So, oops, that happens a lot. Then you just take your pastel and you keep scribbling. The thing about oil pastel that I love so much is it is very much between painting and drawing, isn't it? Like, I really feel when I get to this point, that I'm kind of smearing paint around. It's delicious and messy. Somebody is yelling outside. We have, <laughs> we have this lady who at four o'clock in the morning, she like comes out and this has been going on for years. We call her the screaming lady. Um, she's like, you know, on the Facebook, you can have community talks and for a while she disappeared and then she came back and everyone was like, oh, the screaming lady is back. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny. Okay. Um, well, I promise to Tarya, Natalka, Bianca, you're all on the email list. I, I fixed it after you emailed me. I forward you several emails last week. I really, I think, I really don't know what's happening. I know that like for a while our emails this weekend were broken and people weren't getting emails. You couldn't send emails. It's probably also just my user error because I can't seem to like manage to put all these pieces together every time. It's just, um, I don't know. It's really weird that you're not getting the emails. It seems like it, the problem occurred when I added a ton of new people to the class. Like each list has about 60, 60 people on it. So maybe, maybe it has to do with um, like being on a big list, you know, and then it goes to junk mail or something. Pam, you're on the list. I guarantee all of you guys have been in my class for months. You're all... You're all on the list. I've checked you a million times. I don't know. So 
So I'm going over basically my whole image with white. Seems like kind of a weird thing to do. But going over the image with white is basically just blending it out, brightening up certain areas. I wish I could just send you all the email lists so that you could see, but that's not a, <laughs> that's not a kosher. You can't just send everybody's email out, but I wish I could just copy and paste the email and prove to you all that you're on it because you are. And I check it every time I get an email. It says you're not. Okay, I'm looking for like a black. Uh, I'm gonna get, let's see, I'm gonna, I don't know, let's try. Neo Pastel, Neo Pastel, Karen Dash, any of those, um, they work. I, oh, this is an oil pastel. Okay, so I'm gonna use a dark black. You could also maybe get, if you have a darker brown or a dark purple, those are some good options for the next part, dark purple. So this is a black, then a very dark brown because what we got to get from, see how much darker all this is. And if you actually just Google this image, you're going to see so many different color variations. So just pick the ones you want. But we've basically done our color, then we did our lights, and now we're gonna work into our darks. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my, <clears throat> I'm gonna start with my dark brown. And so there's some, there's some, oh, that's red. <laughs> I'm gonna go with black. There's like a, there's a shape of a, some fish in here. So you can ignore those or you can put them in up to you how much you want to add those in. So I'm just going to do sort of like a C and then I, there's a little bit of a tail like that. Try to get that guy in. But mostly I'm just going to look for those dark shapes that are next to the fish on the middle right bottom sorry bottom right yes bottom right corner so I thought that the images were also coming out mirror image but then when I watched the video it was straight and you could read my writing so I was happy to notice that because on my video when I'm watching it on the screen it is coming through backwards so I'm so glad to know that uh, it does flip it forwards and you can see when I'm writing out notes. Oh, look at there's a big fish over here with a big mouth and he has eyes. Crazy. It's crazy what you find when you paint a picture of a transcription. Every single time I do this, and sometimes even ones that I've seen multiple times, I see the, um, I see you just learn so much from drawing from master works and I think Turner is a really good person to look at if you're interested in understanding texture if you're interested in understanding light he's your guy so I'm really just making short little choppy marks kind of not really thinking about the fish but thinking about the darks in between the fish if we want to put some fish moments in later we can oh there's also some birds um, just but really thinking about where do those darks belong. Okay, I'm going to blend this out a little bit. Again, I like to do this sort of swoop, whoosh, whoosh, like that. Um, almost like a light. I don't know. I don't know what I describe this uh, emotion of or movement as. Okay, I'm moving over now to the bottom. Maybe I can do this for you. Bottom left side for this part. So the dark here is the dark here. And if you don't know this, that you can open two screens on your computer so that you can have the, you can have a screen of the picture up and then you can also shrink it and move it over so that it's next to the screen of my video. So if you can't print it out, you can still have the picture open up, open on your computer somewhere or you can toggle between the two. 
Okay, as we move up the horizon line here, it's getting a lot darker over here. And maybe we should address the where the ship is gonna go. So it's sort of at an angle. The ship is at an angle here. I'm gonna put it mm, there. I'm just gonna put a little line. And then I'm gonna expand that line down like that because it's going into the water. The waves are crashing up around it. And then I'm gonna make sure I put those, oh gosh, you guys know me and the boat, the boat words. I know staff, no. <laughs> I don't know, where's Marianne? She's my boat person. Who's, who knows what, what these are called? These, um, you know, <laughs> the things that you put the, the uh, sails on, the sail, the staff, the... The mast. The mast, thank you. That's what it was, the mast. That's great, so you can just hold down your little space bar when you need to say a sentence and, and it works pretty well. And then when you take your hand off the spacer bar, <coughs> you'll be muted again. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> I'm not sick. I hope no one's gotten sick. I actually know a few friends in New York who have COVID, but they're young, healthy, and recovering quick. Well, it actually took her quite a while to recover, but um, yeah. Lucky to be in sunny San Diego. Okay, so there's my boat. Yes, mast. Thank you, thank you. And if you don't get them straight, like I didn't, they're gonna look kind of funny. So, and not straight up, but just a straight line. So make sure it's not a curved line because those things are never curved. <coughs> Goodness. <clears throat> also, try your finger out as a blending tool. Other things we've used are Q-tips. You can use, if you have rubbing alcohol in your house, you can try a little rubbing alcohol on there. Um, let me see. Okay, this may be rubbing alcohol. It may be vodka, but <laughs> you'll never know. <laughs> okay, so I've dipped um, rubbing alcohol or something onto a Q-tip, and I'm just going to move it through some of this oil pastel to see if I can get um, blend those marks out a little. So that's just another idea. It makes it a little bit more like painting. Um, if you can smear some of these with the oil pot, with the Q-tip and said uh, rubbing alcohol <clears throat> or vodka. Um, yeah, New, I mean, New Yorkers have been inside, like, on complete shutdown for weeks. Yeah, it's just like, can you imagine they, anyone who travels in New York... They have to take the train, so they've really been shut down. So try this, uh, if you have rubbing alcohol. If you don't, just try your finger. If you don't have, um, or if you don't want like to use your finger, try going back in with a harder white that's not gonna sit on top, but that will blend out this color. So you can even go with the white back into the black and it'll blend it out for you. And you can create different layers that way. So these, like maybe these splashes over here, you can even spray it with a little water bottle of rubbing alcohol and maybe even get little bits of water looking marks. That could be interesting. Um, but the real trick to making oil pastel look really exciting is to put a lot of layers and blend them out. Blend, blend, blend. I always end up using this finger, I guess because 
one hand can draw while the other hand is blending and I don't have to like use two hands, I guess. Try to get, you know, if the black feels really flat, add your, add some of that brown or red back in. Maybe I'm gonna, maybe I am gonna use some of this red right on top of that black. Ooh, look at that. Add some extra color in there. Go wild with it. Add colors that you don't think you should add on top of each other just to see what happens. Like what if you made another one of these after we hang up and this one was just the experimental mess up. That would be fun and fine. Yeah, we're so... <laughs> what painting are we doing for watercolor? Uh, we're doing, we're making cards in watercolor. We're just doing like quick eat, uh, flowers and um, card making kind of things in watercolor for, uh, you're the one who sent it to me, Heather, for the hospice. <clears throat> so greeting cards. Some flowers, some trees, but like quick, easy landscapes that you can do with a brush stroke, a few brush strokes, you know, five, ten minute paintings. Make some cards. Oh, okay, so over here I kind of missed this section should be really red and I noticed in the video it was a really beautiful red, really bright. I'm going to add that in. Add some reds over here. Blend out some of these blues. I'm just try to keep myself moving all over this um, canvas. Has anyone been to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and seen this painting? I have not. Did I go to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston? I might have gone to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Exactly. And did you hear, um, <clears throat> Turner said, you know, I, I'm, learn, I'm studying light and light is color. Color is light. It's all the same thing. Um, we only can see color because we have light to be able to see color. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more reds on the, of this side as well by the front side of this wave. It's sort of the epicenter here where we have the boat colliding with the wave and the sun coming down and it's looking like fire back here. <clears throat> Almost looks like the ship is on fire, but it's not. Uh, I'm sure he has a different painting of that. That one's at the Louvre. Blending it out with your finger sometimes, but also leaving some of those marks a little stronger. You don't wanna make it all super soft. You know, we want to create as much motion and movement. Oh, look at what I've done here, friends. What did I forget? My corners. Let me get in there. Let me get those corners. I'm gonna get some brown. So, you know, these lessons that I am always pushing, it's also because they're just as much for me as for you. Constant reminders. So make sure you check your corners now, and if they're feeling really empty, give them a little love. Let's spend a few minutes in our corners. It really helps seal the image. It really helps an image feel like it's much more complete. Um, <clears throat> corners are exciting. Corners are important, and it's easy to forget them and just go right into the middle of the page. But um, it is these corners, that it, especially these corners, and edges that are going to lead us into the painting, right? Let me 
We can hear you, somebody. All right. Well, let's see. Keep scribbling. Today's lesson is all about texture and color. So how do we get that? Well, you build it. You build it up with patience and with a lot of uh, oil pastels. I scrape right back through that white area. If you lose your whites, you might be able to wipe them out a little bit. Like with a, if you're lucky, if you have plenty of stuff on, you can take a paper towel and actually wipe off a good amount of it. You can use your paper towel as a blender too. Okay, this is looking, Ooh, I'm actually quite enjoying using this paper towel as the blending tool. You can use, um, they make those smudgy tools, that's another one. But once you get this loaded up a little bit, it's a good blending tool. My picture. Thank you, Bianca. So there's other classes you can, well, there's, I actually feel like the content is, is overwhelming. There's so much stuff to watch. There's so many people to watch. Everybody's doing live, including me, you know. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot, people are doing a lot of really fun, creative things right now. It's kind of interesting to see what comes out of all this. Okay. Um... I think I need some oranges again. So circling back through our colors, thinking about, do I need to add some yellows again? Well, actually, yeah, I think I need to throw some yellows. So what I've done, we did a whole round of, oh man, that's what happens when your pastel's dirty. So it deposited dark onto my light area, but I was able to wipe that away. Um, and it actually kind of helped build. So I'm going to just throw, we're doing a whole new round of the same colors we just did. So we went all the way through. We started with yellow and now we're going back to yellow. I'm going to just put some yellows back in over here where they got lost. There's some yellows in the waves. So rethinking about my yellow again because some of it really did get lost in there. How about gardening? Has everybody been gardening? I mean, I'm sure Pam is dealing with her beautiful flowers. We have a, uh, I tried to grow a bunch of veggies and then the rains came so hard. We had to pull everything out and turn my front yard into a moat. So that was a bummer, but now I'll try to replant them. Yeah, between raindrops, I know. Uh, I wonder, I didn't look at the weather for this week yet, but today is looking gorgeous. Oh, look at that. This actually, you know, it kind of works to my favor when I have to lift color off. I feel like it's getting a little bit more, um, depth to it, the blending. I'm really liking how I can sort of blend some of these waves with the paper towel I'm using. Dirty it up, kind of muddy it up even a little bit. Okay, let's see, maybe a just a little bit more over in this corner. Really try to get my pastel all the way to the edge of the paper so it doesn't have those little white air bits coming through. Mm. 
Okay, let's go to the orange, back to the orange. Naranja. Going back into this wave under the boat. Back maybe behind the boat, really re-emphasize some of those beautiful oranges. Even into the boat, there's, the boat is actually orange, or it has orange, browns. And again, it might depend on the printout that you have. It might depend on the, um, I tried to, to find the best quality image that I could, and that's the one that I put on the website. Um, I thought I also put it in the email. I'm sorry that I didn't, but <clears throat> it's on that site. But you know, if you Google it, there's like 20 different versions um, for, of, the, of different like variations of colors just from the way that it's photographed. All right, so these oranges, this layer, I'm putting it in a lot softer. I'm just sort of running it over some of these areas, really trying to remember this middle area is sort of the epicenter where the light's coming through, the sun, the, the boat is coming towards that area. So really try to bring those yellow and oranges to the middle. Can add some of these fishies if you want to. And what's going on over here? I'm still forgetting my my corners a bit. Okay, so this time instead of I was using black for my my dark color this time I'm going to take a dark blue so that I can do a little bit of this um, oh how fun fabric painting that sounds fun okay so over here we have really dark blue and that kind of became that dark blue with the blues and the browns but I'm going to Add just a little bit more dark blue because we didn't use dark blue before. So now we're going to take our dark blue and try to clarify some of those ocean waves. So I, I do, it is hard to make it look like that's white spattering um, wave crashing over there, but you can get it to look more like that by adding some dark blues around it. So by adding the dark blue around here, it makes it look more like the wave, there's some cloudy wave stuff crashing down. So add some of those dark blues in now. It's funny, this blue doesn't, it doesn't sit on top as much. Yeah, try to get some like over here, especially in the edge, try to bring some of that dark blue in because it's really coming in in a big wave and it's going towards the water, the ship, excuse me, this way. So trying to pull this, this is what, what I'm doing is bringing some of this dark blue over so it's bringing the dark, oops, the dark towards the boat. And it's coming from the edge of the page to help think about my edges, thinking about my corners and get me over to the parts where we want to see, which is this boat. You can add a little bit of dark curly waves to this part of the wave crashing here. It might start to feel so loaded up that the color is kind of just sitting on the next color and not or what happens is it gets really loaded up and it kind of scrapes away the other color. And when that happens, you've, you've maybe just filled the paper as much as you can, or um, you could let it sit in the sun for a bit and it'll soak in just a little bit and then you can add another layer. The oil will kind of sink into the paper and that makes it a little bit dry. So if you feel like you're getting so, load it up you might just have to put it in the sun 
and then come back to it a little bit later. All right, I see some darks up here at the other side of the horizon line now. I mean, we know this is ocean, so obviously it's gonna have some darks in it. Ooh, this is looking, looking really exciting now. I'm kind of, I'm getting excited about this piece. And in the top right corner too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, I did paint my nails, which actually happened after like four, I don't know how many weeks of hand videos. And I was like, oh gosh. Okay, so these are just like $3. This is a no, this is like the cheapest oil pastels you can buy. Oh yeah, these are water soluble. So you can even use these with water, not vodka. Um, and then a friend gave me a bag of also just like Walmart brand cheapies. I'm telling you, these are like two bucks. And these are what I bring to class. Um, they're really cheap, Artist Loft. I mean, you can buy much better pastels, but in general, I don't really, I don't really use them for like my professional art. So I just use them for classes and practice and so for that reason, I don't spend a lot of money on oil pastels, but I also think um, they work so well, whether they're cheap or expensive. And when sometimes when a material is cheap, it just allows me to be less careful, which I like, you know, if I'm not using really expensive paper, or I'm not using really expensive material, it allows me to make a mess and just sort of be okay with, if it ends up in the trash, okay, like whatever. You know, and there's something to be said about that. I know I say don't use news, newsprint, but that's because if you do make a great piece of art, you don't want it to disintegrate. But with the oil pastels, um, you know, the pigment is not gonna fade because it's an oil. And um, the main thing that can happen is, one, if it's in my notebook, it's gonna get squished up to the, to the next one. Let's see. Let's see how the, hold on, Let's see how the, uh, the last one held up. <clears throat> okay, so this was uh, last week's. So the main thing that happens is that it's, gone onto the next page. So pushing from the other page has pushed it onto this page. But I also didn't leave this out in the sun to sort of soak up. So we'll see what happens with this one. Um, but I don't, I really just use them for practicing. Hmm, what else do I want to do? Maybe like a little bit of a fish eye on some of those. I'm gonna make this into a, a fish and it's, like, um, what do I call that? Shape. Kind of like a bean or a teardrop, I guess. You know, those are both. So here's a teardrop here. And then I'm just going to give it a little tail like that. And an eyeball. That's it. And then, oh, yeah, you can give it a, you can give it a mouth if you want to. Hehe. <laughs> But those look a little too clear for me. I'm gonna mess that up a little bit. But at least you can see that there's probably fish in there, there, that way. Add my darks. Again, now I'm going in with the black, trying to go around some of these lighter areas and get some more, maybe a couple more fish in here. I, had, I never even noticed this corner of fish attacking a slave. That's just a really intense, crazy painting and story. I had no idea that's what this piece was about until I began researching it. And then I thought, well, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> because that's what I've prepared for. Okay, maybe a little bit more black. One last layer of black, and then I think that's gonna do it. You can find 
little things in this water down here. Um, there's, I see a hand. Oh God, I'm not gonna put those things in. You can put them in if you want to. Just using my last layer of blacks to really seal the deal here. We're coming in on the final moments. I'm gonna add some extra dark blacks on top of this dark blue to really try to get that sense of a wave coming down. Well, and you know, talking about cheap oil pastels, like that's for oil pastels when it comes to things like watercolor and paper. I mean, gosh, there's really no point in trying to paint watercolor if you're gonna do it on a bad sheet of paper because you just can't even do the things that you need to be able to do. Um, so for watercolor, I, I really, you know, Daniel Smith, uh, but for oil pastel, hey, use the Walmart brand. Unless you really love it, then go buy Karen Dash. It's been the, the best stuff I've seen. Um, but I like Sennelier for the chalk pastels. I think we'll do chalk pastels next week. I don't know. Do you have a preference? Feel free to um, message in now and let me know what medium you're thinking about that you would like to use at home. And maybe I can find a piece of art that will work well for that medium. So let me know. Just adding final little detail marks with my black. This is what I call in watercolor class, I call it sort of the calligraphy at the end. You're sort of using like Almost like in, um, okay, Linda likes oil pastel. Suzanne, I'm not going to do acrylic because I don't own acrylic and I don't have the money to buy acrylic paints. And I just actually really don't like acrylic paints, but I will do uh, oil pastel and, or sorry, oil paint. And when you do oil, when I do oil paint, you can do acrylic and that's usually the best way to do it. Chalk pastels, that's what I was thinking about for next week. We'll do chalk pastels. Um, and then we will move to maybe an oil painting. That could be fun. And then if you don't want to do an oil painting, you can do it in watercolor or you can do it in acrylic. All right. I think that came out pretty, pretty good. Do you want to show your video, turn your video on and show me yours, anybody? I'm going to um, expand this screen out. Let's see. I see Natalka. Woo! Wow. Heather. Woo! Maureen. Great. You guys are so good. I don't know if everyone else can see it, but you know what you can do? Hold down. Okay, Natalka, wait, or Heather, hold down your space bar and say something because then it'll make your screen big. Well, I don't have a space bar, but I can unmute myself. Okay, there, so now you'll, your screen will go big when you talk. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Bless you. So much fun. It's so quick, and look, there's a big explosion. Oh, yeah. I like that, Put, pull it back a little bit, it's too close. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. Gorgeous. I love the purple. Ooh, I like that, Maureen. Maureen, say something, Maureen. That's oh, gorgeous. I, my favorite part is the light purpley stuff. Yeah, I love the colors. Yeah. Jeannie, you have to say something with pressing your button so we can see you large. I have to turn on my video audio first. <laughs> Ooh, those are pretty colors. Yours looks like a Deven corn. I love the purples. Beautiful. Hi, Tarya. Oh, okay, nice. you have to uh, hold your space bar down, Tarya, and say hello to us. I don't oh, know. If, I don't know if it works. Move it yeah. low. Ah, oh. lower, not high. Yeah. Yay! Oh, yeah. Put it in front of your face. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like the waves in the bottom. They really look like they're moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you really got the motion of the ocean. Watercolor. Great job, everyone. Anybody else? Is that watercolor? 
Yeah, is that oh. watercolor, Taria? And Maureen, was yours watercolor? Uh, yeah. It was oil pastel. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. mine, was, mine was watercolor. Oh, oh, I tried to do that. It wasn't working out. Well, now you can try again in watercolor. You know, you can always uh, do it again. You could, if someone said, you know, it, I, if I go too fast or if it is too quick for you, just um, wait for the recorded video and then you can pause it as much as you need to when you and rewatch it. Or maybe for some people, it's just better to only watch the recorded video. I mean, I love being able to see your uh, holding up your artwork is such a great, awesome part of this. Um, but if for you know if you want more time if i move too fast it's always okay to just wait for the recorded video and then when you're watching the recorded video you just click pause when you need to and that can be a really helpful thing that i think especially for some of my classes where it takes some people are just at a different pace than other people and that's okay um, this one was specifically a little bit fast because I wanted you to use rapid texture and um, all that fun stuff. So again, let me just send, I'm just going to send you the link okay. one more time. <laughs> uh... I think I'm going to send you the link. I'm just really confused as to why my landscape painting link is my Zoom link. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It doesn't make any sense. But okay, so I'm going to try and send you the link for this page, but I think I know I already sent it to you. Um, and then later today in an hour or so when this thing records and I upload it to my video, then I will embed it right here at the bottom of this artwork so you can watch the video there. Sound good? Mm -hmm. good. All right, That's everybody. It. And Bye. so today at one o'clock, if you want to join, we're going to do the watercolor cards, quick watercolor cards, inspired by Heather's idea to send uh, cards to people at hospice, which I think is a really nice thing to do during this time, during all times, really. Okay, thanks, What's everybody. You're Bye. awesome. Great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Thanks a lot, Teddy. You're welcome. Oh, good. Dwight, I'm glad to hear you on. End meeting.